What is up, boys? We are back here with another video. This time we're going to be talking about the 25th anniversary of 10 Dueling Mirrors. This is the second video I made. The first one, I was calling this set trash. Some of you guys were saying, you know, it's not going to be trash. And lo and behold, I was correct because um, I'm, going to, I'm going to link the video so you guys can watch that. Because this is a separate video. We're just going to review what's included in here in this video. Uh, and give my, my thoughts and opinions because I got some thoughts and opinions. But if you want to check out why this set, why I thought this set was trash, even before the set even, you know, the, we got the cards uh, and why, you know, I was accurate because there are points I made in there that made it, it was, it was more, uh, quote unquote, scientific, if you will. I had data, you know. Uh, and, and, and if you want to check out why, how, how I predicted it, you can check out that one, is what I'm saying. So, anyway, so. This we got some people opening this up, and I didn't I didn't watch any videos. I kind of so I kind of did actually. So I watched what's his name Cyber Knight's video. That's the only YouTuber, big YouTuber that I actually watch. The other ones, the uh, like pack opening stuff, uh, you, really Yugi tubers that are big. I don't really watch because they're kind of boring. So the I mean Cyber Knight is a little bit like milk toast as well, but I don't know. He seems like a real genuine dude. So I always support him, and even then I wasn't really watching it. I was kind of just looking for the the actual prod, the the inclusions, right? So I was kind of fast forwarding and all that stuff. Uh, a lot of people though that actually watched the creator videos were saying that they were not uh, excited for the product, that they could feel they weren't excited. So go with that with what you will. I again I don't know firsthand, and it's also really hard to. To, to determine tone, especially through a video. Anyways, so let's go ahead and draw, uh, hop right in here. So it seems like all the the uh, prismatic rares, ultra rares, and um, quarter century rares that have been uh, shown to us in these creator videos are here in this wiki. So let's go ahead and see them. So we already knew Blue Eyes by Dragon with the OG artwork was in and that's cool in my opinion we also have the four the four limbs that we haven't gotten in qcr form from the forbidden one my boy exodia and a lot of people i know were disappointed i'm actually not as disappointed now the, the reason why is, is so this tin i i think it's conflicting because tins are usually more geared towards meta players they have been since they were you know mega packs because they are reprinting stuff that was essentially meta for the past year that hasn't seen reprints because that's how konami does things right they will uh, prevent reprinting things uh, within a year of its lifespan sometimes less depending on where that pack fits in that schedule uh and then reprints everything all at once in in a tin now what they they also do though is or they did i should say they used to include promos and these promos uh, it was usually more than one, and usually it was some kind of meta. Uh, they had some some kind of meta relevancy, and they were also like DM pandering or you know some anime pandering BS, right? Now what they what what the teens have lost is that identity because they're trying really hard to split the focus between the meta reprints and the nostalgia crap, right? And looking at this product, looking at this tin, you would assume there's going to be nothing here for the meta players. And that's what I'm going off the lens of, right? So going back to the inclusion of the, the, the Exodia limbs, I say that's okay because, again, the product, if you, if you take, if you show pictures of the product to a random person on, on the street that is into Yu-Gi-Oh, of course, they would assume that it's going to be a lot of DM and looking at the sides, then the, you, they would also assume there's going to be some GX, all that crap, right? So, including those in this product, just be, be uh, just based on the image alone, makes sense. And I'm going to use that as as I go forward, FYI. Toon Kingdom also makes sense. DM, Relinquish Anima does not make sense. It is meta, but again, I'm going off the lens that this is not a meta set because that's what Konami's presenting it as. Scapegoat, again, yes. DM, uh, Joey used it. DM, Dark Magician Girl, yep. Treasure Tribute, no. Uh, so again, that's kind of going towards the lens of more meta, and it's going towards the lens of... It's, it's combining meta and nostalgia, which it, it, right now it's not... 
it doesn't jive with the image of the set. Xyz Dragon Canyon, it makes sense from the nostalgia uh, set, uh, the the nostalgia pool, the nostalgia uh, image that it re represents. But at the same time, there could have been a lot better choices. The gadgets, yeah, uh, again, better choices. The Seal of Ori Calcos, uh, sure, that makes more sense than the gadgets and the dra the the canyon, the Xyz Dragon Cannon X Y Z. Why am I calling it Xyz? But it, it makes more sense because it was like a very it was used a lot in the anime X Y Z and the gadgets. I think what uh, the gadgets were probably only used by Little Yugi once. So, like, yeah, that doesn't really make sense. Maybe twi I don't know. Uh, Guilty Gear Feed, the Magical Steel Knight. Again, it doesn't make sense. It's not actually a card from the anime. It's not fitting an archetype that's from the anime. It was. It's a, a card that Joey. It's based off a card that Joey used, sure, but it, it's not an archetype that Joey used. If that makes sense, it's not its own archetype. And also, it's, it's stepping on the tones of the collector rare people that have it, myself included. Win Karibo, yup. Good inclusion, wake up your elemental hero, or wake up your motherfucking hero as I say it. Yep, that makes sense. Opening the spirit gates, it makes a little bit of sense, but it also doesn't because they just hit this on the ban list. And again, it's trying to be, it's trying to touch the competitive scene, and it's trying to touch the nostalgic scene. And when you split focus like that, which is the main focus of this video, guys, Konami is splitting the focus of the set. You cannot, it's not a good time, and that's why the set is going to flop, by the way. Uh, relative, you know, short term is going to flop. Long term, depending on the, how the collectors view it, I do see potential in it just because of, of the QC alerts and the, the alternate art secret rares. But uh, Crystal Bees, Ruby Carbuncle, yeah, it makes sense. Ubel makes sense. Chimera Tech makes sense. Honest makes sense. Uh, Light and Darkness Dragon makes sense. Actually, this is a really good inclusion, by the way. If you guys are not familiar with it, let's open it up here. It's Light, Light and Darkness Dragon, the OG. OG card, really cool from the from the manga. Red Dragon Archfiend, yep, makes sense. Uh, doesn't make sense. I think this is what is this? I have no idea. I think this is a competitive card. Doesn't make sense. I don't remember. I, I we're hitting the five Ds era, and I'm a little more iffy on the five Ds era and beyond. But I'm pretty sure they didn't use that consistently in the five Ds era. Uh, Ultimate Zulkin, yes, that's the the dragon. Wing uh, Black Wing Dragon, sure. I, I think I already got a, a Starlight Rare, though. Cosmic Blazar Dragon, yeah, another Dragon Excel. Yeah, yes, yes. All, all these make sense. Coach King, I think this is a more of a meta pick as well. Uh, again, I, I'm more iffy on 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 the <laughs> on these cards, but let, let's just let's just say we're already hitting some some weirdness here with the prismatic secret rares where they're splitting focus relinquish anima makes sense if the tins were more focused on on the meta but it seems like they're trying to be 50 50 where it's like kind the set is kind of for the meta people but the set is also kind of for the, the nostalgia people and it, when you split focus you, you guys got to realize this as, as you as you as you uh, how, do, how do I phrase this? It, when you when you start working on things in a bigger scale, and Konami is a pretty big scale company, right? They're not a mom and pop operation. They are, uh, they have in America, they have different continent, different countries that they're working with, right? Um, I should say in, in North America, they have different uh, countries that they're working with, Canada, etc. It's not a mom; it's a big scale operation. And when you split focus, when you're big scale like that, big a big fish. You 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 get crap is, is essentially what I'm getting at. You do not split focus, and that's what Konami has been doing quite a bit in a lot of these products, and that's what people are really mad, right? They're not necessarily mad that uh, we got Exodia limbs. They're mad that we got Exodia limbs in this set because they expect the tints to be meta. Now I, on the other hand, am upset that Relinquished Anima is in this set. And I'm not mad or upset that Relinquish Anima was reprinted. It's more like, why is it in this set? It doesn't make sense to me because, again, I'm going off the lens that this is the image. This is this is what Konami has painted this product as. This is a nostalgia set. Relinquished Anima was not in the anime. Relinquished Anima was never used by Pegasus. It is not even part, of, really, of, like, like, it's just a generic card, right? There is really no... There kind of is, but there's no relinquished archetype. There's no good relinquished archetype. You cannot play relinquished in a competitive scene by itself. So why include relinquished anima? It doesn't make sense, right? 
And, and no, I'm not saying like everything needs to be competitive, but Relinquished Anima just really doesn't make sense in a nostalgia set. So you you are splitting focus. You are this set just just doesn't hit any mark because you're trying to please too many people. What they should have done because it's a 400 set size set. Um, make two make two like why 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 not just make the tins heavily focus on the meta and that's what people you know expect the tin to be and then release another set and and in include all these qcrs in there and have them be have that set be more nostalgia and there are cards that we need that are hard to find that could be included in that nostalgia set and then you can also have people by the way they can they can pick and choose which set they want to buy, and then th what they open, they know exactly what they're going to get. So you're going to run into scenarios with this set in particular where people are going to buy it. The meta people are going to buy it, and they're going to be like, wow, I, I pulled a Dark Magician Girl. What am I going to do with a Dark Magician Girl? Now, I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to be like, oh, I got what, what's a good, uh, uh, what's, what's something that's doing decent uh Oh, and Shining Neo's Wingman got reprinted as a Prismatic Secret Rare. That's cool. They should have been in the um, last year's tins, but, you know, whatever. Konami being re retarded over here. Uh, I'm trying to find a Diamond Bell Star. I pull a, a Snake Eye, a Snake Eye Ash. I'm going to pull, I'm going to open up this product. I'm going to pull a Snake Eye Ash. I'm going to be like, oh, cool. I'm going to, I have more stuff to sell. You know, I, I don't want that crap. So you're going to, you're going to alienate two of your core of your core like there's three there's three people that that really buy product right and it's the meta players the nostalgia players and then the collectors now the collectors will usually buy about anything right because you can collect meta stuff you can collect and there's a lot to collect here with the 50 qzrs as well right but you're going to be splitting the the two bigger the, the two big um core pool of your buyers and that's going to be the the I was gonna say prismatic because I'm reading it. What? No, the the nostalgia players and the, the the competitive players. You're gonna alienate both of them because I, as a nostalgia opener, you know, I don't want. I kind of don't want to buy this set. And a competitive player is gonna look at the openings and be like, okay, so I only get three prismatic secret rares, and that's really where the meta cards are gonna be. And uh, it, it costs twenty dollars to do so, and I might not even pull anything competitive because they're including Dark Magician Girl with an alternate art, Red Eyes Black Dragon with an alternate art. All, I mean, all these cards are really cool, but they're not for the 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 meta players, right? No one's playing Dark Magician Girl competitively. No one's using Red Eyes Black Dragon competitively. And it, wait, they they're not including including the Blue Eyes or the Dark Magician in here. It looks like what? Okay, that is crazy. So, yeah. And so let, let's let's keep going here. So we got a couple tokens. The, these tokens are going to be pretty decent, actually. I don't know if they have a picture of them in here. They do not. Okay, that's kind of what I thought. It's just a generic token page. Uh, Harpy's Feather Duster. That's actually pretty competitive. Let's see. So uh, Elemental Hero Shining Wing Shining Neos Wingman. It's it's pretty competitive actually, but only in hero decks and heroes are rogues. So making this a prismatic secret rare in this set reprinting stuff from that should have been the last year set again terrible move uh favorite contact again that's should have been last year's tin uh gravekeeper's inscription is a secret rare it was already a, a secret rare in its set and it's increasing the pool size of stuff that people actually want to pull so no this should not have been a prismatic secret rare. It should have been an ultra rare Let's see, Granola Dragon. I, that was already reprinted recently, so I didn't need another reprint. Uh, tier, all the tier element stuff is pretty decent, actually. It's Prismatic Secret Rare. Well, wait, hang on. They're, they were already reprinted. Why Why are they in here again? Tier elements, cash tier. Okay, that, I think that was from Sayak. Yeah, that makes sense. Triple Tactics Thrust. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Konami's going to put really good cards as Prismatic Secret Rares, obviously. Wannabe is a Prismatic. That should have been an Ultra Rare, at least. And I get that it's decent. But, like, it's it's not... Konami has this problem where they see a card that's kind of good in a very ni specific niche, and then they put it in, like, a very hard, a, a very tight spot. Meaning, like, Prismatic Secret Rares, there's, like, how many in here, dude? Holy shit. That, wait, what? Prismatic Secret Rares. So there's 102 occurrences. No way, bro. 
Wait, hang on. So there's not going to be a hundred and... No way. So it's a hundred prismatic secret rares confirmed. So if you guys can see here, right? Once we loop back, there's uh, an occurrence of prismatic secret rare here, here, and then it goes here in all of those. So if we, we omit those two occurrences that we know are not part of this list, there's a hundred prismatic secret rares. You get three per per tin and then you get 12 tins for 180 dollars so what is that 18 times 3 38 24 so 54 holy shit you can get you can pull 54 if you spend 180 dollars and there's a hundred you're and you're gonna get doubles guaranteed this is insanely terrible for the um the competitive people oh my god dude this is like i'm actually like oh my god man and I, I predicted this. This is exactly what I predicted. I mean, yeah, this is exactly what I predicted. Why is Spirit of Ubel in here? Why are are they printing stuff from uh, Power of the Elements, Photon Hypernova? The, the, why is why is she in here? Wait, why is she in here, bro? Okay, hang on. What? Okay, that's the only besides the Ubel QCR, which makes sense. That is. They're increasing the set size on purpose, guys. Because Spirit of Ubel is like a very cheap super rare currently. And, and it's, you know, five months old. You know, it doesn't need. And, and then SP Little Knight. Like, okay, so the thing about this scenario, guys, you're trying to pull SP Little Knight because you're trying to play competitively, right? You buy a, a, a case, $180 worth, and you, you're you going to pull 54 of these Prismatic Secret Rares guaranteed. But you pull a fucking junk warrior, right? You pull, you pull th more realistically. You pull three junk warriors. You pull. Wait, why is Black Luster Soldier legendary? Why is what? Why is Fighting Flame Swordsman as prismatic secret rare, bro? What? What? Dude, all of the oh, all the, oh, oh my god, dude. I think I'm gonna end it here. I'm just gonna complain. This is, this is not good. This is this is really not good, man. Like I I'm I'm this reaction is just, I, this is the first time I'm seeing this, guys. Like I said, I only watched parts of Cyber Knight's video. Oh my god, this this looks bad. And there, so re reprinting stuff from uh, it looks like Wild Survivors, Maze of Memories. Yeah, they they should not have done Maze of Memories. Besides, uh. Uh, yeah, but they should have just not done anything for Maze of Memories or Wild Survivors, to be honest, to decrease the set size here. So what what are the Ultra Rares, actually, before we go here? Like, is there any good Ultra Rares? Heavy Poly. Oh, that's that's a new card. Uh, oh, let, let's look at this new card, by the way. Fusion, summon one Fusion Monster from your Extra Deck using three or more monsters from your hand or field as material. You can also banish monsters from your Extra Deck as material up to the number of monsters your opponent controls. But you lose life points equal to the total attack of monsters banished this way. So that's pretty decent, actually. In certain decks, some decks might actually uh, run with it. Uh, ooh, wait, wait. Can you use the... Oh, no, you need three monsters. Okay, never mind. Uh, Melfi, Wally. Let's see. Melfi's like... Come on, bro. Ultra Rares. Uh, instant Contact. It, again, this this card should have been in last year's set, tin. They should have been. I don't know why, why they're trying to milk... Uh, power of the elements so much here like god damn dude there's i mean so far i'm not seeing anything that's that's decent why is that an ultra rare actually what the hell why is that an ultra rare oh uh, i'm pretty sure yeah there's no super rares there's it's only gonna be ultra no rares no no super rares only ultra rares and prismatics and qcrs yo okay yeah we're gonna end it here because i'm just gonna bitch there point being here guys is Vote, vote with your wallet. That's all I'm going to say. Me, if I wasn't opening up stuff and I, if I wasn't interested in chasing QCRs, I would not be buying this. If you are a meta player, do not buy the set. Just buy the singles. Let people like me waste their fucking money because we're not going to pull shit, right, with the pool size the way it is. And, yeah. And in conclusion, Konami has to stop splitting focus. They What they could have done is we know Bonanza's coming up. Bonanza could have been moved up here, and that could have been the the Nostalgia set, or the other way around. Maybe the Tin could have been the Nostalgia set, and Bonanza could have been the more meta-focused set. But them splitting focus like this 
it, it target it, they try to target a lot of people at the same time but wind up targeting no people with how big the pool is how hard stuff is to pull and how un, unenthusiastic people are opening it up seeing something that they don't want don't need don't care about and then not buy any more product that's the video guys catch you guys in the next one